Neurological Examination, Wikipedia Article Audio A neurological examination is the assessment of sensory neuron and motor responses, especially reflexes, to determine whether the nervous system is impaired. This typically includes a physical examination and a review of the patient's medical history, but not deeper investigation such as neuroimaging. It can be used both as a screening tool and as an investigative tool, the former of which when examining the patient when there is no expected neurological deficit and the latter of which when examining a patient where you do expect to find abnormalities. If a problem is found either in an investigative or screening process, then further tests can be carried out to focus on a particular aspect of the nervous system. Indications Patient's History List of tests Interpretation In general, a neurological examination is focused on finding out whether there are lesions in the central and peripheral nervous systems or there is another diffuse process that is troubling the patient. Once the patient has been thoroughly tested, it is then the role of the physician to determine whether these findings combine to form a recognizable medical syndrome or neurological disorder such as Parkinson's disease or motor neurone disease. Finally, it is the role of the physician to find the cause for why such a problem has occurred, for example finding whether the problem is due to inflammation or is congenital. A neurological examination is indicated whenever a physician suspects that a patient may have a neurological disorder. Any new symptom of any neurological order may be an indication for performing a neurological examination. A patient's history is the most important part of a neurological examination and must be performed before any other procedures unless impossible. Important factors to be taken in the medical history include Handedness is important in establishing the area of the brain important for language. As patients answer questions, it is important to gain an idea of the complaint thoroughly and understand its time course. Understanding the patient's neurological state at the time of questioning is important and an idea of how competent the patient is with various tasks and his slash her level of impairment in carrying out these tasks should be obtained. The interval of a complaint is important as it can help aid the diagnosis. For example, vascular disorders occur very frequently over minutes or hours, whereas chronic disorders occur over a matter of years. Carrying out a general examination is just as important as the neurological exam, as it may lead to clues to the cause of the complaint. This is shown by cases of cerebral metastases where the initial complaint was of a mass in the breast. Specific tests in a neurological examination include the following. Sensory system testing involves provoking sensations of fine touch, pain, and temperature. Fine touch can be evaluated with a monofilament test, touching various dermatomes with a nylon monofilament to detect any subjective absence of touch perception. The results of the examination are taken together to anatomically identify the lesion. This may be diffuse or highly specific. General principles include A differential diagnosis may then be constructed that takes into account the patient's background and present findings to include the most likely causes. Examinations are aimed at ruling out the most clinically significant causes and ruling in the most likely causes. Time of onset, duration, and associated symptoms age, gender, and occupation of the patient, handedness, past medical history, drug history, family and social history. Sensory, light touch, pain, temperature, vibration, position sense, graphesthesia, stereonosis, and, two-point discrimination, extinction, 
Romberg test 2 out of the following 3 must be intact to maintain balance, I vision 2. Vestibulocochlear system 3. Epicritic sensation. Looking for side to side symmetry, one side of the body serves as a control for the other. Determining if there is focal asymmetry, determining whether the process involves the peripheral nervous system, central nervous system, or both. Considering if the finding can be explained by a single lesion or whether it requires a multifocal process, establishing the lesion's location. If the process involves the CNS, clarifying if it is cortical, subcortical, or multifocal. If subcortical, clarifying whether it is white matter, basal ganglia, brainstem, or spinal cord. If the process involves the PNs then determining whether it localizes to the nerve root, plexus, peripheral nerve, neuromuscular junction, muscle, or whether it is multifocal.